Hey guys, welcome to the MC Anime Podcast. We cover anime, geek culture, Japanese aesthetics, and Asian studies. We are a multi fandom podcast, and you can expect to hear topics in your favorite hobby or fandom activity potentially. You can find MC Anime on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Also, please check out mcanimepodcast.com, our website. Furthermore, stay tuned in for another episode. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of MC Anime. I'm MC Anime, and I got my regular one of the mill co-hosts. How you doing today? Everybody, it's Leah. I'm good. It's been a busy day, but I'm excited to talk about today's topic since we we did a bit of work with this one. Yeah, this will be interesting. Um, we're going to do another series type episodes linking mm-hmm. together. But it's not going to be as directly obvious as Elemental was. It's going to be motifs. So what do you think of motifs in the literary world where they usually come from? In the literary? I mean, I think they're great for symbolism or to help mm. kind of drive a story. So motifs, guys, um, in the very literal sense and the definition for it, it's um, it can be like a pattern. It could be a design, um, a prominent feature or some idea, essentially like how in animes we have, you know, either themes or kind of like overarching symbolism. Those are what motifs are. So we're going to be kind of talking about a lot of the really big ones that you see in shows but the ones that have um, really great stories behind them. And so this will be our first week one that we're starting with. And I think they're great just for storytelling in general. I think, of course, as patterns and designs can be really cool when you try to des- um, create something. But seeing them and how they kind of sculpt the story and help you become immersed in the world, um, I think they're necessary. You just don't want randomness all the time. Yeah, you want that, like, the reoccurring themes, so they keep coming up. They're going to be bought more than once. They're going to be bought up again if the show or the, the designer or creator wants it to keep coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it really also, it also provides lots of Easter eggs, if you will, for people to go in and actually see them in action in the storytelling. So if you can identify it, say, oh, that's really cool. I really like how they did that. And also, when you're talking about that character, say, oh yeah, they had this like interesting motif that they had. They had the reoccurring theme of the animal keep coming back, being the, the big bad and how he was deceiving everyone. It was kind of cool because he was a snake, because snake represents evil. So yeah, we have like, you know, or they travel back in time and they use this symbol to indicate that specific instance of what that looks like. It provides a really interesting appeal to the story, but also provides insight into a little bit more broader context, if you will. And you know what? It's fun for fans to find out if a show uses it because... They're very subtle sometimes, and other times they can be right in your face. Yeah. So the subtle, or actually the best investment to find, because then you actually feel really proud if you find that. And these are also the weird YouTube videos that have like the all the overlapping evidence to support this specific claim, and they dive into the franchise to find the answers. We're not going to that deep, but there is people that will take this to the extreme. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, because there's there's quite a few, and we tried to pick some that were very fun. Um, I think this week's one is kind of like a great way to start it off. Uh, 
because even I think when you first look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's right. I do see that almost in every, almost every popular show or in some type of um, pop up, even in like the less known animes and even in anime movies. So for this week, guys, we'll be talking about um, the, butterfly the butterfly of what is it, life and death. Can... Yeah, it's basically of rebirth and death. Mm-hmm. You're reborn, but you also can die again, kind of thing. And, you know, the butterfly of rebirth and death is kind of interesting because the butterfly is a symbol for two different subject lines. And sometimes the story can take it with one direction and just be rebirth. They can also use the death related to, like, for example, uh, if you see a banshee, it's a signing of someone's going about to die. You know, that arrival of that type of creature can be identified with a butterfly resuming death of some sort, you know? That is the connection there that the symbolism can have. This is the 29th episode. So yeah, what do you think about we both butterfly we both and death? Do you think it's really interesting? Um, well, it's not just something that came up because you know it's a a popular thing that's only found in anime. It is yeah. found in other forms of like literature and art, but it also comes from Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the Greeks, they they did see creatures like butterflies and bees as a great example of essentially life after death and metamorphosis. So the butterfly was a symbol to be used um, to basically represent uh, the goddess Psyche. Um, So with this goddess, and it was used, it was in, um, in Minoan culture. So they had a symbol that was um, a labyrinth, which was like a double bladed um, weapon. And it was like a double bladed axe and it looked just like a butterfly and that represented death. And that's what they would use almost as like a ceremonial and ritual representation of this goddess. Mm -hmm. So having that be kind of engraved within a culture and then kind of spread out even to now, hundreds of years later, still impacting us and still representing itself. I think, I think it's not only impressive, but it just kind of holds a weight in how they're in the shared consciousness of um, oh, like yeah. the hu- like of humans that we always do want to look for something that is, you know, after what we think is supposed to be the end oh, chapter. Yeah. So having something that rep- and it's also beautiful to think yeah. that, you know, you can transform into something new that is still mm-hmm. like a form of yourself, but um, kind of reshaped and rebranded uh, to just go back out there and try it again or go down towards another fate. But it doesn't always mean that it's going to be great. But um, yeah. in regards to butterflies, they normally show a very beautiful side of yeah. the end of life and then the restart of another. Oh, yeah. And not only the metamorphosis is like that unique evolution from caterpillar to butterfly, which dramatically change how you look. You know, you have the delicate beauty, a metaphor, a transformation, and hope. You know, of course, it's a symbol for rebirth, we resurrection, the triumph of the spirit, the soul over the physical prison, the material world, you know, an emblem of the soul and unconscious attraction to light. I really think it's the soul is the opposite of the worm, you know, butterfly is lightness and fickleness. But we have like artists of the beautiful parallels and develop of travels dramatically metaphorically to recreate China it's like joy and bliss related to love the wings transform you know you which being burned in Cupid's hand holding the bow Shakespeare like the opposite of the hawk initiation as opposed to logic intuition so mm-hmm. it also has a really deep meaning in animal symbolism as like animal motifs specifically is also another genre that we will probably discuss at some point in this series. 
But for me, I really find it the fragileness of the butterfly is yet subtle but very significant to the message it brings. And no one does this better than Jeff and Noah to the visual scene. Expansion Jutsu. Uh, you want to talk about Shoujo? Oh, for Choji? Yeah, so, Choji. So in Naruto, um, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it is it Shippuden where we first actually see. Um, well, it's actually in Naruto. And then is it in Naruto? It's in Naruto, and then it goes. It gets more powerful in the Shippuden. Okay, um, so in Naruto, there is there's of course, uh, him and like his merry band of friends who are also shinobi, um, other ninjas, and everyone does have a special ability, um, and like and like was um stated earlier, you know you have uh Akamaru. And, um, oh my god, who is his owner? Who is the dog guy? There's Akamaru, and oh my god, Shikamaru? no, no, not Shikamaru. Who <laughs> I know he's on the, it's on the tip of my tongue, but anyway, all of his features also represent, um, like how his dog looks and how he is. His whole family has, um, dog characteristics. Uh, but for Choji, who is always known as being like the larger character, he's always seen eating. He's always, um, all of his attacks kind of involve either expanding his body or bouncing around. He gets into a fight in which he basically has to use one of his ultimate moves that primarily can kill him. And it, it in yeah. a way, does. But then it's seen where he like just like a caterpillar um as it cocoons itself and wraps up and then reemerges with a whole new form as a mm -hmm. butterfly he does the exact same thing so you you do see him essentially die and we do lose that version of choji in the moment mm -hmm. um but then of course he's reborn and then even in um i think what is it like shippuden there yeah. are multiple times where he's seen with butterfly wings um you know, as an expansion of his chakra outside of his body. Yeah. And uh, the technique is actually really risky because if you, I, I know he in Naruto, when he released it, there was like a specific pill that unlocked the form itself because he actually wasn't technically ready to master that power. But when we see him in Shippuden, he actually gets more training and actually performs the, the technique better but he's not needing a pill to go into this phase that he's not actually ready yet he's ready for it mm -hmm. yeah because i know, believe when he does is... it when he's younger yeah like because it, it he has to you i think it's like basically they take the their energy their chakra and like the calories that he's always consuming and yeah. it, it is a form of um of fighting that is in his family in the Akamichi clan. Yeah. And so he you see him get skinny too. You see like he slims up and you know his hair is sticking up. He's he's full transformation mode and the wings are showing on his back when he yeah. does it the first time. But it it absolutely drains him um and almost nearly kills him. Yeah, because you know in the in the first time he releases it he wasn't ready for it. So the power is like a double-edged sword. As much power it boosts he gets, it also drains all the most of the power he has. So if you really think about it, he's using up his previous form to reborn in, in the butterfly stage, but it's kind of like the opposite. Like the rebuff comes after he's already living kind of thing. And the rebuff happens after the transformation. Basically, the, the the radical change to his body breaking down and using that calories in a short amount of time, burning it all up in the technique. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to if you don't have the proper 
energy levels to perform the technique, then you are risking using the power of empty fumes, and that can backfire on you. So it's just like the caterpillar getting all it can eat to metamorph the size into the butterfly. Yeah, his just kind of like, it's fast acting, um, and it also burns out very, very quickly. So I, I think the first time I saw it, because it, it blew my mind as a kid watching it the first time. <laughs> yes. I was like, what the heck is happening? Oh my God. Like you get, you're so into it, especially when you're younger and like oh, you're yeah. just like glued to the screen because you're like, yo, Choji, why is he skinny all of a sudden? Why is he so much faster, so much stronger? And it's, it's this great technique that his family has always passed down and had. And that it is very unique to their to their clan. Yeah. Um, but seeing it in action for the first time, because you actually never see it, because you don't see it from its like parents or anything like that, since the show's focused around um yeah, the children. All the kids in the game. And yeah, so it it was absolutely wild when I saw it. And I think that was one of the one of the first times I think it's very clear seeing that rebirth. Um and the <laughs> butterfly motif really come through because of course it shows up in other shows, um with butterfly symbolism. I just hadn't really seen yeah. someone just sprout wings in the form of chakra on their back. So oh, yeah, it it was intense. It was very stressful. Uh, with Shoji's powers, like you really don't see much powers based on metabolism, and his is directly based on metabolism. It is still really interesting to me because yeah. not only is it like into the butterfly trope of rebirth and death, but it also goes into like how much calories should you eat to power up this move to power up this move? You know, what energy do I need to conserve in order to go in this form to use this attack? Right. Like, I mean, of course, characters do that anyway. They have to be careful what, the, how much they exert and all that stuff. But like with uh, a high metabolite like Choji's, it's even more cautiousness to when you're fighting because if you release too much, and the enemy is still doing every attack that you can, it backfires on you. Yeah, I think his is probably the most prominent out of um, every representation when it comes to these, like to the butterfly motif, because oh, yeah. for the whole time you see Choji, like the 20 episodes beforehand, the 30 episodes beforehand, whatever, you never see him use this move. And every attack that he uses is mainly about expansion. It's never in the inverse. So it's essentially watching a character, like if you were used to someone being um, a water user, and then they suddenly started to earthbend or something. And you'd be like, well, um, this isn't you. <laughs> this is this isn't on brand for you at all. So it was it's completely yeah. insane. And I think it's also just very iconic because I think that was probably one of the first times in Naruto where you're like, Oh, we're about to lose someone that who's been with us since like day one. And you're like, Oh, and he did it in such an incredible way. And if he did die while being a butterfly, it, I think it would have been even yeah. more impactful. But I'm happy he's alive. I don't. I don't want to kill yeah. off Choji. No, <laughs> no. That's the. Oh, I mean, like the. Oh, no. That would be. Oh, that's, oh. It's too cruel. That, it's too cruel. That would be more tragic than someone like Itachi and that, what was going on with him. Yeah, I mean, at least with Itachi, oh. like we had, we had a good amount of time with him. And we kind of worked yeah. through his whole story. That would have been fine. The man's been through enough. It's okay. He did what he <laughs> needed to do. But sweet, sweet Choji, all that boy wanted to do was eat chips and hang out with his best friend. Like, yeah. we and can't that, we can't just yeah. kill him off. And for the uh, Amachi's clan's oath, the clan members take an, a coming of aid ceremony. It's uh, the symbol of the butterfly emerging from its chrysalis and taking flight. So once you do that, it's a coming of age ceremony representing the fact that you've matured enough to represent the fullest of your powers and represent what the clan represents, basically. Which right. is also kind of cool, too. Because, you know, the clan's all about you know, taking flight, the most freedom you can ever have, store through anywhere you want. 
like that symbolism, just having flight is also iconic as well, but flight is a totally different topic that we don't even know we would do at some point. Um, I don't know. It also reminds me of like the uh, crystallis that in the Marvel universe, the Inhumans, they go to that like type of evolutionary event where they just suddenly trigger in their genes and they emerge with powers kind of thing. Mm. I mean, the Marvel, well, Marvel and DC, they, they're pretty good with having um, like that major like pressurized change that happens to a character that causes the metamorphosis. Yeah. Um, I can't think. Are there any butterfly represented characters in uh, the comics? I mean, there's uh, like Bumblebee. Bumblebee is pretty good with. Well, yeah, he's like an insect though. He's more. Oh like no no animal. no no! I'm not the uh, uh, not the car. I'm thinking of the girl. Uh, there's a there's a female character in the DC comics who's like a. I want to say she's a bee. I believe she's a bee. Yeah. But I, I think, I'm not sure uh, if her name is Bumblebee. I th- okay, so there is one big connection. The Infinity Gauntlet. Thanos turns his equally evil clone into a butterfly as he passes and he passes on and eats it. But, <laughs> I, you know. Yeah, not that's not necessarily a, evil, but all right. <laughs> it's not evil, but it's a scene that basically it turns his evil clone into a butterfly. So... That's like, I don't know, the butterfly of death? Even though I, it's basically getting so. rid of the evil self? I don't know. That's like that's like a stretch. Um, mm. Well, Marvel does have um, a butterfly superhero. Uh, is it Cycloc? I believe it's Cycloc. Yeah. No, her, her name is literally Butterfly. Well, her superhero name, anyway. There's Layla Rose Miller who's also known as Butterfly, and I guess she has um, I don't like know reincarnation if she's like, powers? Resurrection powers. Like, mm, yeah! I guess that makes sense. It's kind of cool to have that name, but it doesn't really represent the uh, Butterfly of Rebirth and Death trope, or motif. Because it's like, it's a I mean, she theme. can resurrect people and creatures. So True. I guess the metamorphic process. Hmm. I mean, we, I guess reanimation, maybe. Yeah, she has re, she has resurrection. Yeah, I guess it's just bringing them back to life. I don't know about reanimating. Yeah, in particular, re- but I guess it I counts. Would, yeah, yeah, necromancy, re- resurrection, kind of thing. It's on par with the uh, motif, I should say. Well, that answered one question. Oh, okay. Well, what? I just learned about a new hero. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Been educational for us all. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> all right. Instead of heroes, how about the hero win? Like Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon, she's she's pretty... She's a pretty great example of the butterfly motif. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, in, uh, I believe, like what, which one sail- of the Sailor Moon? It's, um, they do have a a sailor like called yeah. like Heavy Metal Papillon. Yeah, Heavy had, Metal um, mm-hmm, Where which she Papillon would turn. Like a butterfly warrior kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, in in Sailor Moon, like this, she was uh she only showed up in the manga, but yeah. essentially she was like a servant of the group, the Big Bad. So she was on the side of evil, but she turned people's um she took like souls um yeah. from like crystals that were in Galaxia, and she turned them into like actual butterflies. Um, mm-hmm. so it was she was a great another um great representation of using the trope of taking something that is in one form and transforming it, especially something as serious as the soul. And then also yeah. just in um, in the original version of the Super Sailor Moon, 
uh, you had the butterfly motif uh, mm -hmm. where Sailor Moon is able to actually have the power of like rebirth. Yeah. Um, and then and also you too. see it. Yeah, you also see it with her, her transformation, the magical girl OG like transformation. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, you see butterfly wings standing behind her, kind of like out framing her. Yeah. It's also it also matches Sailor uh, Saturn's power of destruction. When Sailor Moon was Super Sailor Moon, the version of Super Sailor Moon has the power of rebirth as well. Mm. I just want to go back to the big bad, like the big bad. Is that well, yeah, a crime organization? <laughs> Yes, the big bad. Why don't laugh at their name? It's not, <laughs> it's not great. I mean, I have to laugh at it. It's like can't pick a more ominous or you can't even pick an ominous name. They just call the I'm the big bad. Feel me. <laughs> I think it's just like how you can just put in general general evil people. It's just like the big bad. Like I, I guess in in that way. I mean, someone who turns souls into butterflies, like when you're stealing souls and making them butterflies, I'd put you in the big bad. I'd put you in that group. That's pretty <laughs> fucking evil. That's pretty, that's pretty evil. That's pretty, that's pretty messed up. Like, leave my okay, soul so alone. So, okay, so, it's no more, so like someone like Pegasus puts you into a Yu-Gi-Oh card, puts your soul into the Yu-Gi-Oh card. Is that like the equivalent to a butterfly? Um, I... I don't know because the thing about Pegasus is like, like there. <laughs> what's his name? Was it like Cowboy Max Johnny Marian or Pegasus. something? No, 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 no. Yeah. It was the dude who like was like yeah. the caricature of the American who at one yes. point just like points a gun at Pegasus' face during a card game. Like I felt <laughs> that. I was like, this guy's he, just shoot him. Like he doesn't have. He only has one eye. Like what are we doing? <laughs> What are we doing here? This is ridiculous. This is a card game. <laughs> I have never played Yu-Gi-Oh! And felt like... When I was younger, I would say. I would be like... Um, I was definitely about like betting my soul. But now, as an adult, with logical sense... I don't know how Pegasus yeah. got to be the way he was. But if he trapped me in a card, I'd put him in the bad category, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk move. Because also in Yu-Gi-Oh! We have like cards like Papalotive. And all that stuff. We have like an entire archetype of insect based butterfly warriors. So that's kind of interesting. But, you know, with Sailor Moon, you took the souls into crystals and then the galaxy captures and then the butterflies. So, like, what is the goal after she turns them into butterflies? Just let them f fly freely and that come back? I guess. I mean, it's kind of like in any show, I guess, in the equivalent of when someone transforms a person into, like, some animal or some, like, object. Yeah. yeah I like, mean, you're kind of taking away their autonomy. Like, now they they don't technically have free will. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if you take away the, the agency, they have nothing left. And if they fly away, oh, fly away, oh, glory. Fly, fly away. Oh, God. Sir, people are being turned into butterflies. We have time for you to do karaoke right now. Like, we, this is a serious matter. We, we need to address this. I'm actually looking now because I do want to know what does she, I can't, because I can't remember what she does with these butterflies. Oh, oh, well, yeah, that's right. She uses them as, like, her actual, like, power. Yeah. Like, uh, like, she used them for attacks and defense. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, like you know, your soul gets turned into a butterfly, and then you have to protect some chick. Um, oh yeah, who also kind of looks like a butterfly. And yeah, and this also reminds me, like, uh, there's also I'm gonna add bleach for a second here. Uh, the messenger black butterflies that we see, like they're the guides to. Those wanting to cross from the soul society to the living world, and vice versa, they'll be also otherwise they'll be forced to pass through the dead guy, the forbidden world where death is surprisingly easy, carry messages within soul society. But you also see the message of butterflies 
being used as decoys when Aizen takes over. So the message of the butterflies kind of defeats the purpose when he well strategically manipulates the messages that they were, were branching out from the uh, Dotai Central 66, I believe. Yeah, because um, cause in Bleach, they do use, like, butterflies do show up a lot yeah. in Bleach. And, of course, Aizen naturally, you know, has yeah. to ruin everything because that is just Aizen. <laughs> just Aizen, like, he's a dick. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, that seems <laughs> about right. Um, but the, because they're called, like, the, uh, what, the Jigo Coochie or Jigo Cucho um, yeah. is what the black butterflies are called. And they have multiple purposes. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they give you messages. They guide you through so you don't, like, screw up and go, yeah, to, like, the Valley of Death or whatever and definitely die butterfly. again. Yeah. Um, like, they're black. Yeah, it's, it's yeah they're black. It's like, well, that makes like, sense. Yeah, I mean, are they, okay. they are the messages the world of, of death? Are they, are they the messages of the we both or the messages of death? No, they they just carry messages, and they also Ooh. are used by the Shinigami. Um, um, Jesus Christ, the Shinigami. They're just they're yeah. used to not only lead for souls, but also to deliver messages. Which is, of course, how Aizen was able to like use them to cause more issues and more harm. But um, no, I don't think they're evil or bad. I think that's just kind of. Evil. I think yeah, they're like. On the spiritual plane, they are the ones to guide you. So yeah, they're guiders, but of course they're black because you know, black de- is they're dead. Like people are dead. It's the soul society. So I yeah. I can understand it. It also looks cool. That might also be oh, yeah. it. Yeah, we could be we could be doing that thing where they're like, what do the blue curtains mean? When the author <laughs> wrote this, and it's like it doesn't mean that they're depressed or sad. Yeah. it just means that they're blue. <laughs> like it's so these yeah. who, it's so cool. Who's the wizard? Who's the Oz behind the curtains? Who's the power yeah. of the entity in in the shadows? <laughs> Come on, some guy. Yeah, it's like it's it's <laughs> never as big as how we're making it out to be. We're gonna like. There's a lot of amazing things about Bleach, but I do think that yeah. the butterflies are black because they look cool yeah. being black or. Or I'm just oh, making yeah. this easy. How about Basculus for a second? This is such a brutal show. <laughs> like, the whole show was just brutal. Ooh. Let me know before I go. Did you watch Basilic when you were younger? Uh, I, I know about it. I know how brutal it can get. I've, yeah, because that was, that was one of the... I've watch it for that aspect just al- just alone. You didn't want to watch it because it no, was No, I wanted brutal? to watch it just because of that brutal nature aspect. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was like yeah. that that is kind of the whole show. Um there's there's a lot of there's a lot of death. <laughs> like this is just a lot. Um hold on. No, I lost my notes for Basilic. Well, play it myself. Oh. I know. This is what happens when you have like 20 tabs up. Okay, mm-hmm. yep, there we go. We're back. Um, anyway, so in in Basilic, for anyone who's watched it, if you were even allowed to watch it or could sneak to watch it, um I, like it's a show, it's a tearjerker. You're gonna probably cry. Or be very like unpleasantly thinking about it later on when you're trying to go to sleep about some of the deaths and and murders that happen in it. Uh, I mean, that's not gonna bother me. What? That's not gonna bother me. Oh my god. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, all right. Well, um, so our host is totally fine with everything that happened in Bath. Really? There wasn't any of the deaths that made you be like. Oh, then we have to go that far? Because even like even the ending, I don't feel good. I don't feel good watching this show at all. Like I have to go and like pet a dog after watching that show. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but anyway, in the show, um, there is a character, uh, Hotar Ruby, who mm-hmm. 
who uses butterflies and also other insects um, and reptiles to like attack the people that she's fighting against yeah. and her enemies. But also when she dies, because everyone dies, <laughs> that's like uh, when she does die, um, her body ends up, you know, falling off a cliff. And then in the sky, you see like a, a grouping of butterflies flying away. So as her body drops, the butterflies are ascending, which is another, it's, it's just a very mm -hmm. on the nose representation of um, the like life and death contrast oh, yeah. that come with butterflies. You talk about the swarm of butterflies episode. What? Talk about the swarm of butterflies of Basculus. For the character we just talked about? For Hota Ruby? Thing. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be her episode. Yep. You know, escapes the butterflies, that with her too. Magic escape. The festival was the one who, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I Not think it's kind of interesting. Because it's like, what, episode 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah, oh, wow. Even an unlucky number. Oh, what the heck? Number yeah. 13. Yeah. <laughs> That just weird in itself. I don't know. What do you think of number 13? I've never been superstitious about the number 13. Like, if I had a dozen of something, you know, like how there's mm. like the, the baker dozen. That's 13. Yeah. That's always a good thing. I think it just gets a bad rep. I just think people put, you know, a bit more superstition on it than it should. I do love when it's Friday the 13th, though. Like oh, yeah. I will, I, I will movies. make sure to mention it to all my all my horror fans. Oh gosh, I love Friday the Thirteenth. Well, like, you know, I believe it's the Thirteen God, God Squad. So if Thirteen's really a bad number, Eisen was number twelve. So no, Eisen was number ten, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a number thirteen. He wasn't number yeah. twelve. I think it's like ten or twelve. What is no it was number eight? Hold on. We have the interwebs. Yeah. Uh, I want to say it's ten. Yeah, it might be ten. Um, he was the uh, the fifth division captain. Oh. Oh. Okay. All the way off, all yeah. the way off. Oh, yeah, we're not, 13, we're not the trivia buff. I don't know. I like the butterfly summoning, able to a large swarm of butterflies, mass a hand seal, and barely audible chat chant, and then pink butterflies, too. Interesting color choice. What do you think about pink butterflies? Always find them board. like they're they're beautiful. You you wouldn't because like you take pink to one, it's a feminine color, so that works for um Hojirobi. Yeah. And then two, it's supposed to ha act as like a uh, more something that's delicate or very soft mm -hmm. and sweet. Um, not necessarily fragile, but yeah, you, you know, also have too sweet too. <laughs> yeah, I and. Yeah, because in her, like her, her, um, her butterflies are like a great symbol of her. But, yeah. but I don't know. Like even in the show, when when you see her and you see the way she fights, like for one, she's very determined. Um, and who who's the big bad? What is it? Salmon? Samson? Yeah, I'm lying. Hold on. Yeah, it's Damon. Um, yeah. But in the show, because she, she uses, she, of course, she uses them to attack and fight yeah. people. But I think it also, like, it just adds to the sadness of the show that even with something that's supposed to be very beautiful and very, you know, very mm -hmm. sweet, maybe something that you would look at and maybe have hope <laughs> or some type of gentle feelings, um, you you don't even kind of fully get that because when she, when she dies and the butterflies ascend to the sky... Yeah. It's not, you're sad. Like at least I was sad when I watched the scene. I thought it. I was like, I mean, it's beautiful, but 
yeah. kind of tragic, kind of bittersweet. And I think in this show in particular, they definitely represent um, kind of like a bittersweet feeling, which I think is kind of resonated mm-hmm. throughout the whole show. Oh, yeah. Because even though everything that's beautiful still ends up dying. Oh, yeah. Don't forget the the relationship with the Viper and the Hawk as well. Which I don't know. That, that's kind of interesting because the, the Viper and the Hawk are like natural enemies. But they're like coexisting with her. The relationship with the Hawk and then the spiritual connection with the Viper. What do you think well, of it's that? A deli- it's a delicate balance, I think. Yeah. I think when it, whenever you have something that is like a bigger threat, um, yeah. like you can have natural enemies, but if you both realize that if you keep fighting each other, you're all going to die because there is something that is much more dangerous out there. You yeah. can find a very, very delicate like ecosystem to maintain yeah. just long enough for you guys to team up and use all your skills to like defeat your bigger enemy. Which they did. They did that a lot in Basilisk. Like there were people who absolutely hate each other, and they yeah. still they like they were trying to come together to to overcome like a bigger enemy. So I mean, yeah. naturally, I think you can kind of see it as being like, oh, that's. That's not normal, but when you look at the full story, yeah. and the show's pretty good at layering too. True, that was, you know that actually reminds me of the mongoose mm. and the cobra. <laughs> the mongoose and the what? The cobra. Ah, <laughs> like they're like the the mongoose has like some uh. Immunity or no resistance to the poison, so they can be bitten multiple times, and they were very stand the ground. Where the cobra's like more intimidating by the hood and its shape, trying to look more gigantic in size. I don't know. I mm-hmm. think it's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, because I mean, it, it, you're also looking at two creatures that are in stark contrast to each other. Like you're looking at yeah. a snake, um, <laughs> a reptilian, and then you're looking at this like tiny little like mammal that normally <laughs> like you would li- maybe if you like a ferret or whatever you'd be like oh those definitely are not going to go fight a snake but a mongoose <laughs> don't care a mongoose is like bite me and they are bite really me. good at killing snakes they, yeah. are, they can fight and kill them it's the thing oh man <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> it's so funny to sometimes watching them like mongoose don't care like Let's yeah. go. <laughs> like, like, a, like honey badgers. Like they don't care. They they yeah. give zero. Oh, zero. God. They... <laughs> oh my god. I've seen a bunch of stories with honey badgers. Oh gosh. They're feisty little things. Don't oh my god. Don't get After... the devil either. I, literally anything that lives, like either in the jungle or the desert, I <laughs> know can kill me. Like stuff in the city. Like, I can fight a street dog. But if you throw me in the desert, like, I can't even see half of the stuff that's out there. And it's How like, you, gonna you fight can't... a raccoon? You can't fight a raccoon. You, you can fight a raccoon if you have a bag or something. Yeah, like, but if you don't have nothing and the raccoon bites you, just kick, you can, you kick, just a, you can kick a raccoon. You can kick a raccoon. They're just so small and fast and clever. That's very true. And they do look like like the old tiny thieves, but that yeah. doesn't mean I don't have like I still have a I have the possibility of maybe winning. But if you th- <laughs> like put me up against a, like a boa constructor or oh, like any yeah. any type of desert spider, like the ones that look like sand. Oh my god! I'll just That's- give you a scorpion. See a scorpion, I could I could just outrun it. Or throw my shoe at it from a distance. Like, <laughs> that's fine. I can do that. <laughs> like, even vultures freak me out. They're Because those are vultures? not the representatives. The scavengers vultures? of the world? Dude, oh. they are, yeah. Because they're, first off, they're disgusting. They they just wait for things to die to eat it. But then, yeah, too, no. they, are, they are so far from, like, the butterfly motif. They are just, yeah. like, the, <laughs> the bringers of death. That's it. How about, oh, oh, oh. Speaking of uh, spiders and vultures, Spider Man versus the vulture. <laughs> In the first <laughs> movie. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, I do I do love Spider Man's villains. 
I I I really do. Green Goblin is always going to be like top, but the Vulture. I don't know. I like <laughs> I his like wings. He's like I just love that he's just some bald old guy. Like actually, we can think about it. Spider Man fights a lot of old dudes, like yeah. men who should who have mortgages and should be doing literally anything else with their time. They're just oh. like I got to go fight this either sixteen or like twenty one year old. <laughs> like hold my coffee and hold my heart medication. Oh yeah. Well, it brings us to the next series, I guess. Mad Guy, The Labyrinth of Magic. Mm-hmm. Oh. So what do you what do you think of Mad Guy, first of all? Um, I love adventure shows and magical shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I like I absolutely love Black Clover. So um so Maggie kinda reminds me of that. I haven't watched all of it. Not oh. even close. De- definitely haven't watched all of it, but I know enough about it. And it, it looks good. Like I haven't met a single person who that show isn't isn't at least a show they enjoyed. Um there's yeah. a lot of people who's like it's one of their favorite shows or it's in their top ten or something. But I've I've literally never met a single person who's ever had anything bad to yeah. say about it. How about you? Um, I really like it. It's it has a lot of comedy aspects and you know, Alibaba trying to be a dungeon capture with the help of Mad Guy. It's just kind of interesting. And they're capturing dungeons left and right. And they're just I don't know, it's, it really just goes on an adventure story. It's a it's me. a great adventure story. Oh yeah. And the later seasons are not bad either. Yeah, I think it's one of the, like, I think the story, as far as I know, the story is solid. And I don't, I like, there are some shows out there where they're like, everything wrong with this show mm-hmm. or how these things don't line up. But I haven't seen anything like that for, um, for this yeah. one. And the, the, butterf- the butterfly we both in death motif here, not actually, it's like, it's the reoccurring theme of the power source, the Ruho. Is the home of the souls while we live. It's every man for themselves. But when you die, you all go back to one place. This is the Ruho. When humans die, the bodies return to the earth, don't they? The souls return to the Ruho, the home of the souls. The Ruho takes the form of butterflies, literally the form of butterflies. And when you see Magi of the Labyrinth of the Labyrinth of Magic, you actually see it more because the Ruho has like two distinctive forms. Gold yellow and just dark black. What do you think about that? Well, for this one, the only thing that I think like when mm-hmm. in the show, they're described as like, I guess, birds that it's mm-hmm. supposed to be. But they literally look like butterflies. So, which is very yeah. strange. I feel like they should have just went ahead. Because like, there's literally times where you see them um, by objects in the world. like, And they also can, um, they can influence things that are happening like in real time in the world. They don't just represent like the spirit or soul or magic. Um. But they look like butterflies. They they absolutely do. And I think that Rook is a really, I think it's a cool twist on how we normally hear about like mana or chakra um, for it to represent magic, but also kind of represent the life force within a person and how it changes colors depending on the type of magic you have or whatever emotion you might be going through or if you're doing the right thing or not. Um, I think that's just a cool added layer to it that you don't always get um, with stuff yeah. when it comes to like spiritual ability or like the manifestation of the human soul. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I think it's really interesting for that aspect. And you know, it also makes you appreciate like it's like a different form of what we might think of what Ruho is. The guiding force, like of the particular show, it's really strong because it's 
it's like seen mostly in that show more because of Magi and the dark Magi going against each other. One has hope, one has despair. What is it going to do in the power balance, you know? Yeah, and I think the way that, because it's like, how many forms of magic is there? It's like eight, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it's like, well, I guess eight or nine. So I guess like there's there's a pink one as well at some point. Um, but the way that that can be a reflection of like indiv- individualized characters and their strength. Now, I don't know from the show, um, so far as I've seen. So for each person when they're performing their stuff, How often? They don't, but like in the, especially with the dog, man guy, you just see it throughout the entire battle because they just have so. Mag and the uh, mad guy itself can influence uh, what color the roof. Okay. Yeah. And also you have, and the less you get is like the last magic you have as well. It's not like directly like it's it's just like Asta having all the clothes. Because he has no magical ability, so they keep pecking at him. In a sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because like, the more I look at it. Back. Now, do now I'm trying to see. I don't see many anything. Okay, so I guess the black root, because they're normally seen as like like that white or golden color. And I guess the yeah. black is for if you're essentially either going against fate, like the right thing to do, um, or being like essentially the worst kind of person ever. If you're doing that, I guess they turn black to represent the darkness of your soul. Yeah. Very, very on the nose, but it looks really cool. <laughs> like it, it actually looks really cool. I'm not rooting for evil, but I'm just saying that sometimes evil has a better look. Like, oh yeah, aesthetically yeah. pleasing look. <laughs> What's your favorite example of that? Um, of a dark character. Yeah, dark character was like the colors, were like the color saturation or the color representation or costume did really well. Um, I probably have to say in Sailor Moon. Um, Sailor like Moon. black, like black. yeah. Yeah, because in Sailor Moon, so you have Sailor Moon, and then you have Black Lady. Um, so she has pink hair. Um, she wears like a black dress or like a red dress, and she's like she's been cor- she's like she basically is corrupted, and she is the uh, adult version of like Sailor Moon's daughter. So she is like the perfect, I think, flip of it all because they also have similar hairstyles. I think for her hair. It's more of a cone um, for the pigtails on the top, while Sailor Moon has more of like the ball shape to it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think her look is probably one of my favorite in the in regards to like representation of of like, oh, this character is clearly evil, or you know, like Scar from freaking Lion King. They made they <laughs> literally Scar. made him look as evil as possible. Like they were like, yeah, put a scar on his face, give him a black mane. He doesn't have like the lighter fur. Like everything about him is like evil. <laughs> or like Jafar. Like all the all the Disney villains in like the old school movies, <laughs> they made sure to be very clear. They're like, do not root for this person. They're a jerk. But they also have the greatest song. Be prepared for an amazing Jafar. song. Jafar. Jafar to me is like, you know what? 
if you had your own movie, I don't watch that. Like just oh, seeing him how he that. became if he actually like became like if he had his own movie, I would totally watch that just because of who he is. Because he's like what? A couple hundred years old? Something like that. Are? Um... Yeah, how I don't think no, I don't think so in Aladdin. I, I don't think he's like uh any added years of old because he's like a regular yeah. human and then he just gets turned into a genie and things go real yeah. south real fast. Um, I, think, I think the best movie would be him after he's turned into a genie. If to he gets honest. like a, if he gets someone to like rub his lamp and <laughs> and is also evil, yes. But if he gets someone like a six year old. That'd be a terrible movie. <laughs> like the kids just making them do dumb stuff. It'd be a terrible movie. But I do oh, I, I did I did like seeing him like become a genie and be completely evil. And then they're oh, like, yeah. Oh, you have a lamp. It's like getting stuck into a lease that you never wanted. So but yes, I would have to say for like my favorite representation of a dark character, probably black lady. Or um um. Oh my God! The main character from Tokyo Ghoul. What's his name? Um, because he goes through so much crap, and then he just turns. What is it? Kaneki? Is it Kaneki? I think it's Kaneki. It is Kaneki. Like his, his like. Granted, he's allowed to become evil after some of the crap he's been through, and he's a crybaby for the first like season of the show. Oh, he got on my nerves. But when he turns <laughs> evil, his hair turns white. He's got like this like really dope mask that like looks like teeth yeah. and all that. And he has like the red eye. That and like black nail polish. Like this kid went full goth with it. And um, <laughs> and rightfully so. And I, I, I love his transformation too. True. Yeah. But um but Back to the back to our butterflies. Um, in, in in Madri, I think that they again it can be kind of like an on the nose type of motif, but it's shown yeah. in such a beautiful way, um, and True. represented in such a great way that it, it just adds to the show, and it helps. I think it really does help with connecting themes as well. Oh yeah, because I. I don't know. It's really interesting in how that it does it, but also just like the cycle of we both and the metamorphosis and there's like so many things to the we both of like the butterfly we both in death that just gives it so much depth. Like it's yeah. transformation, but like it's just so insane how it, they do it. Like some shows just take it to the extreme. Others take it very subtle but still try to represent it in some way. Yeah, I, I think know. I think it's also great. Um, kind of like a, a, a page turner. Like you're going yeah. into this next chapter or it's or it kind of like marks um, like bookmarks uh, where mm. we are in the story. So if you yeah. lose someone or they die, um, oh, and before yeah. they even have that transformation, it's such a stark, um, like image, especially having yeah. black butterflies or something. That oh, yeah. there is, it is really great at kind of capturing your attention and then moving us on to like the next scene, um, oh, yeah. or the next chapter of the story. So. But they also have. Uh... Gundam's Moonlight Butterfly as well. Mm. Which, you know, in this way, it takes a more of like a symbolic change for like changing the world. It's literally a metaphor for destroying all the technology on Earth 2,000 years ago before the beginning of the series. And then you force society to be a new civilization because of it. What do you think of that aspect? I mean, that's probably one of the cooler ways I've heard of it used. <laughs> um, no, normally you hear it about like it'll yeah. be either one character who is represented 
um, with you butterflies like we've done for Basilic or Naruto. Um, or they're used as some sort of tool, like yeah. how it is in Bleach. Before it to be like, we're getting rid of technology, <laughs> like the whole world is getting impacted. <laughs> um, that That is such a metal thing to do in such an insane <laughs> concept. Like, and Gundam always does this. Gundam's always like, <laughs> yeah, so like you're uh think you're doing something there, huh? Have you ever thought about just taking away all the technology? Just forcing man into a new age? Like that's the same. <laughs> and it, it is re- it, like starting again in a new life. Um and yeah. a transformation. It's like the Honestly, transformation, like mankind has to adapt without the technology, go back to this ages where it didn't have it, and then eventually get technology back introduced. <laughs> And the only way they fight it is like after the we forcing the society to basically the reconstruction of civilization, you know, in the finale, the procrastinous homongous mechas are actually in a cocoon signing the end of the war as well. Oh wow. So basically instead of it being the butterfly out of the cocoon, it's reverting back from butterfly to a cocoon. What do you think of that? Because you don't really see that as much. No, that's either. kind. Of, that's such an inverse. Um, yeah. Of like the like going back into like an evolving um, or less evolved state, um, or even like a yeah. like a state of. Um, hibernation. yeah, of hibernation. You typically don't see that because the the thing that people do want to look forward to, everyone gets excited about the butterfly. Like every, that's the yeah. part that people are excited about when they see the caterpillar, you know, oh, starting yeah. to cocoon itself. You're like, you're not, wa- you're not waiting for it to get done cocooning. You're just waiting for it to like get past everything and break yeah. out of the butterfly. But it's no one cares about. Like, yeah, and they go and that. It- we, going back to a previous form of the cocoon. So, what did it come first, the butterfly or the cocoon? Another another issue with the chicken and the <laughs> egg. It's just and <laughs> and so you sit there, and it, I think also it just helps you sit there and think. So, what is next? Like, what does come next? Because oh, yeah. you having the Earth already go through a metamorphosis of no longer having technology. And then being yeah. regranted technology, and then trying to learn again with that to wrap it up with having these giant mecha machines, which I think are kind of like <laughs> the the biggest um, imagery and representation of like advanced technology, the height of um, like technological advances for that to be put back in a cocoon. It's 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 pretty wild. Like I don't know how I would feel about it. Personally, if I was in that universe, I would think we're screwed. Probably, I'm like, I think we we gotta go back. We gotta we we need the machines. Yeah. Um, oh shoot! You know what would be a really great episode? The inverse effect. Just everything ooh. being the opposite of what they should be. I oh, do God. like I like it when those are especially when they're done smartly, just like how you're yeah. talking about for Gundam. Because <laughs> um, there, there can be times where people are like, "But what if we just did the opposite?" And that's just like it's just nonsensical. It's stupid. You're not even trying. It's not. You're not even trying. Um, yeah, we do opposite day. Yeah, if it's just opposite day in that universe, then it's not great. But I think if it's used um, oh, gosh. with like a literary skill um, mm. and a great story, then. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's that's a really dope topic, and there's, yeah, there's plenty of representations cool. of it. Now, if we did op- okay, so we if we had to do the inverse episode, we would have to do opposite of ourselves too. You're the opposite of ourselves. Yeah, hmm. you're like super energetic. I'm like, I don't know. We have to like really tone down who we are, and or maybe we we switch roles. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be hilarious! <laughs> I could do you for a day. I could do you for an episode. 
<laughs> How are you gonna be me? I could. I I've done enough episodes with you that I could. I could definitely figure this out. Like <laughs> I could definitely figure this out. I'm gonna like have like my transition like one liners like set up and be ready. Oh my gosh! And then I guess I have to like be over hyped, be like going into more tangents and going off topic and. You have to. Talk That's the only way to truly fashion. be me. Yes, you have to. You have to dedicate yourself to it. You need I mean, to do like a five minute tangent. I usually try to go. Uh, try to, I try to stay on topic. So we the week direct. Oh god! Now we're gonna have to switch it up. Give oh, give the boy. give the people something new. I'm about it. <laughs> Oh, I don't know gosh. if it's what they want, but it is. It can it can be done. We have the technology. Yeah, the inverse effect. I don't know. Is the opposite like the inverse a a representation too of a motif? Uh, I don't. I can't say off the top of my head if it's technically um, a motif within itself. Because I'm, I'm, we would also just need to make sure there's enough representation of it. And off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of shows that do it. But I do know shows that do a lot of things with Opposite Day. So. Oh, yeah. Opposite Day. Um, that's pretty popular. So, yeah, I guess that works. I mean, Opposite Day is still, like, the inverse yeah. of normality. True, but it's not. You know the two actually the two separate topics. If you think about it, ooh, mm. that'd be really interesting. You do the, like back to back and have like different comparison. Oh boy, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Right. instead of we both, we will bring death. Instead of of we both, they will bring death. We both, if you're reborn, you have died. If you've died, you're reborn. What do you think about that? Well, that sounds like a headache. Why? <laughs> it, 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 sounds, it sounds like something you would hear, like, in Alice in Wonderland, like, from the Mad Hatter. <laughs> like, I would be like, no, seriously, I'm just trying to find my way to the castle. And then they would say that, and I'd be like, I'll just figure it out. I like actually a plot of a show. If you if you die, I'm you sure. be born, and then yeah, if you, I'm sure if there's you, something like that. If you are born, you die. Yeah, you know, I, I know I, like powers that look like that with reverse uh, time, but like, <gasps> oh, there is a show that kind of does something similar to that. Oh gosh. It's like they they have a number and it represents the amount of times that they did their action in life. And one person has a negative number. Oh. Dang it. Where is it called? Oh, God. I have no idea. I mean, that would be a really great anime discussion. With like those different. Is it an anime? Yeah, it is. Mm. I don't need to look it up. Oh. But yeah, that is, I don't know, Butterfly of Rebirth and Death in a Nutshell. Anything, really anything else to add? No, I think we pretty much covered it all from different, for different show genres to how it's used in different forms. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a pretty powerful motif. Um, and I think it's one of the funner ones because who, who doesn't yeah. like butterflies, dude? Like, who doesn't like butterflies? Um, so yeah, I think I think we did great. I'm proud of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we actually found some interesting topics as well. So we had that's a plus. That's <laughs> always good to do Can that. <laughs> but you know, as well, I think the representation of that particular motif is iconic is a really good way to start off the motif defining episodes. 
and you know, particular motifs that we could do is like animal motifs, you know, teenager type motifs and other stuff. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what other motifs has to offer and using it as a lens to study the anime and what examine it, how it's being used in that theme for me. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of great ones out there. And we're going to bring you some more with this series, you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Because I can think of mm -hmm. other shows as well where the butterfly motif comes to you. So I hope you take time. Check out some of the shows that we talked about today. If you haven't seen them. Um, especially Gundam. <laughs> um, because they just love they just love to just like just 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 not only win but win like definitively like that's, that's always a heavy hitter that's going to sit with me I'm gonna like now nah, I'm gonna lay in bed think about that <laughs> so thank you for that thank you Mason oh uh, I love doing thought provoking podcasts sometimes you don't know and then I bring a particular. A little trivia and it's like <laughs> eating not the nail on the coffin. <laughs> oh boy. The nail on the coffin cannot be hit more because it's already in. You just hit you just break the board now. Just yeah, just double tapping. <laughs> but yeah, that's the that's the wrap up of Butterfly of We Both and Death. And please stay tuned as we discuss more motifs in like four to five episode mm -hmm. set up like it was similar to Elementals. And if you have not checked out the Elementals and other podcasts, I would please recommend watching some of those if you're currently watching these episodes. And yet, though episodic, you can watch them at any time, but watching the, the past ones, you might find what you like. And also, if you don't like watching all at once, just browse it like you do reading. Ah, this one's interesting. Let's, let's try this one, you know? Whatever. It's up to you. But have a nice day and enjoy the other aspects of what is out there. Absolutely. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. This concludes another episode of MC, MC Anime, Anime Podcast. Podcast. MC Anime Podcast is available on podcast directories like Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. We also have our website at mcanimepodcast.com. If you want to directly support us, then follow Patreon blog MC Anime. Finally, if you want services for hire, then we're available on Fiverr for audio and video production, graphic design, idea consulting, and blog and article writing.